Let's head downstairs to Sarah Jones. I have Jack Viney with me, Jack. Four losses heading into the bye and a chance to reset. How much does this one mean to the group? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, you know, we've been desperate for a win for, uh, for a little bit now, so uh, it was good to go away from, uh, for the bye, reflect on uh, our first half of the season, uh, you know, implement some new things, and uh, it's good to come out today and get a win, bit of a reward for effort. A tough year also for you personally. Do you feel like you really played yourself into some form today? Yeah, you know, you know, struggling with form all season, so uh, you know, I'm chipping away, working hard, and um, you know, I was just really uh, thankful to play you know, a role in today's win. Bit of feeling in the contest, particularly in that third term, and you and Bradley Hill seem to have a bit of a running battle. Was there a bit of spite in this one? Oh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, we're competitive people, so uh, the game was, was close all, uh, all game, so uh, tempers flare a little bit, and uh, I think it just brings the best out of everyone. You were obviously aware that they had two players on the bench. Was there a focus on just trying to run them off their feet towards the end? Yeah, you know, we, we got told they had a couple of rotations down uh, coming that last quarter, so it does does give you a bit of confidence going to last, knowing, um, you know, try and put them to the sword. So, um, you know, that, that was mentioned at pretty cool time. Congratulations on a great win. Thank you very much. Cheers. Ben Dixon's got Big Maxi with him. Thank you, Sarah. Maxi. After a big week, you come off a bye, there's plenty of changes, and you respond like that. How does that feel? I was going to say, big week. It was pretty, it was pretty light, actually. <laughs> um, we had the bye, and look, teams can be flat after byes, and um, we have in the past, but came out today, and they actually got the start on us, and it's something that we tried to focus on, believe it or not, and we missed the start, but we were able to run them off their legs like... What did Goody say at three-quarter time, knowing it can go either way in this one, but you're coming, as you said, off that bye. What did he say at three-quarter time? Yeah, look, the message was um, was to stick, stick what we've been doing. Our contested ball was a bit off in the first quarter, but from there it really gradually got better. And there were some roles like Viney on Walters early and Harmsy went to five later in the second half and Clayton was back to his best. And believe it or not, Tom McDonald can play full forward after everyone in the world thinks Tom McDonald can't play full forward. He can. We just kicked him a little better today. What about Sean Darcy? Uh, I know you love to chat during the game. Did he give you much? Because you had a great battle all day with him. He's a big boy, man. Um, I've lost a little bit of weight as my career goes on, and you come up against guys like that, and they're absolutely huge, and I couldn't move him. Gave away three kicks early, so I had to adjust my game, and unlucky for him, there was no rotations in the last quarter, so he's probably a bit cooked. And the respect for Jesse Hagen, I was just having a chat to you. You just won a game of football, and you go, what happened to Jesse? How is he? So that must be a little bit of respect from going back the other way. Yeah, he's a good man, Jess. Um, Look, people leave clubs all the time, and especially now in the day of today's game of free agency and whatnot. But look, he really, he, he really wanted to get home, and the way the club looked after that to get him home, and both parties are happy. And unfortunately, Jesse couldn't play footy today, but um, he's well respected still here at Demon Lane. I'll let you enjoy this one, Maxie. Well done. Good man, Dicker. Back to you, Sarah. Thanks, Dicker. I've got Tommy McDonald with me, and Max Gone was just singing your praises. How good does that feel after what was a great win? And, and for yourself, who's had a, had a tough year? <laughs> yeah, tough years are, oh, that's probably a nice way to put it. It's been horrible, really. Um, yeah, I feel like each week I've been close to playing a little bit better and hasn't quite broken through, but this week I feel like I got my hands on the footy. I made a few mistakes early, but I was in the game and um, I think the whole team was a bit the same. We were making mistakes earlier, and, but it came good in the second half and ran out the last quarter really well. So what was the difference today? I think it's we just kept persisting. I think sometimes we've gotten so frustrated that the skill errors have gotten to us mentally and it almost takes the life out of the team, whereas today we just kept persisting and eventually a turn for us. An incredible amount of inside 50s as well. So it was well, a matter of... You know, uh, no, it was pretty... You were definitely uh, high in the differentials there. So when you look at that, how do you make that work for you? Well, the, the problem is we've done that all year and we hadn't translated to goals. I think today we started to hit a few more kicks inside 50, which makes it a bit easier and everyone gets a bit of a rest and kick a goal and you feel good about yourself. So. It's been the tail of our whole season. Inside 50s hadn't been the problem. It's converting and kicking goals. So uh, today was a nice step in the right direction. So what does this group want to get out of the rest of the year, given the season that you had last year and the expectations and where you think you can get to from here? Oh, it's still a huge disappointment at the start of the year. And we've just, we haven't talked anything really about the second half of the year other than it's an opportunity to get better for this year or next year. So had a huge change, coaching revamp, um, sports science revamp during the week. And uh, I think we've really embraced that. It's a bit tough sometimes for people going into new roles, but I think the club's really embraced it and came out with a really good attitude today. Well, well done on the win and your own performance. It was great to see. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate yes. it. Thank you, Sarah. Well, what an amazing difference uh, winning can make. And I thought Tom McDonald uh, gave us an insight into something that I think 
would uh, amaze many of our viewers, and that is he said if you hit the targets inside forward 50, <laughs> yeah. everybody gets a rest. Yeah. And I think there's a view that if you're losing, you're not working hard enough. Half the time, the losing side is working harder than the winning side because they go into attack, get a turnover, and then all of a sudden the midfield's got to run to the other end of the ground. If you can hit that inside 50 kick, it really does underpin the rest of uh, your game. You can see there Fremantle will stay in sixth position in this slightly lopsided uh, part of the draw, given that uh, there's so many sides that have had a buy or haven't had a buy. And the Demons, well, they stay in 16th position. 16th position sides aren't supposed to play that well, Ruzi. Yeah, they're a very good side, we know that. But look, I think both Tom McDonald and, J and Jack Byron are really honest about their own performances too. So you can see the honesty that exists inside a footy club now. They know when they're playing well and not playing so well. And both those guys, I mean, they're terrific people and great players. So we have Jack Viney and Tom McDonald back into form. All goes well for the next sort of nine weeks for the Melbourne Football Club. And you can see today, they've got a lot to play for. Yeah. They're not going to turn up their toes. They're not going to you know, do anything other than pick their best team every single week and try as hard as they possibly can and get as many wins in the back half of the season. 17 points uh, they trailed by uh, early in that second quarter. Fremantle got off to a fantastic start. Their outside game was absolutely superb. They were actually winning the clearances as well, despite the reputation of uh, Big Max Gorn. Darcy was doing well. Uh, Hill was doing well. Nat Fife was absolutely killing him. Probably only Monday was slightly off. So it was a bit of a grind, this. Aided and abetted, of course, by a couple of injuries. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Melbourne probably deserved to be a bit close to what they were in the first half. And then the second half, it's really hard to play when you're two down. I mean, Hogan went down halfway through the second quarter and then Hill went down halfway through the third quarter. And then we saw Melbourne dominate outside, you know, start to get a bit more ball use. I love their more conservative ball use in the, in the last quarter. I thought it was yeah. really significant. They started to go side to side and use the width of the MCG, lowered their eyes a bit more. They t can be a bit manic at times and they play on too often. But I thought the, I thought the last quarter was their real blueprint for the back half of the season. There's Nathan Jones and uh, he would have been fretful in that last quarter uh, knowing that he was going to be the focus of a lot of uh, media attention had they lost that game after a silly blue. Wasn't uh, that damaging but uh, gee it would have been but uh, they haven't sung this for four weeks. There's nothing better than having a win. And just getting back to the Nathan Jones scenario, I mean, he has done so much uh, right for this particular club, uh, but that would have been a bad moment for him. Sonny Walters, though, this is a real concern. He's a Brownlow medal chance, and he's been reported for a nudge. Yeah, it's not a good look, is it? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a long way off the ball, even the vision even, so it's a bit hard you'd love to see. And that's Nathan Jones at the end of the third quarter when Melbourne would have had a shot from inside goal. So, yeah, look, obviously, whether they've got another angle of the Sonny Walters one, it'd be hard, it'd be hard to hang him on that vision because yep. even though you could sort of see him putting his head forward, it's, it's very, very hard to see how hard um, yeah, the, the contact was. Yeah, they are stories uh, for later on in the year. But the story today is that the Demons are back on the winning list. It's been a long time coming for this one, but with Tom McDonald returning to form along with Jack Viney, the Demons have picked up another four points. Victors today by 14 points at the MCG.